Hello there, how are you doing today? Again, I ask you, how are you doing today? I hope that all of you, all of you who are, who are watching on YouTube, all of you who are listening to me at newfoundfaith.org, I hope that all of you are doing well today. I hope that you're well physically. I hope that you're well mentally. I hope that you're well emotionally. And I hope that you are doing well spiritually. And if you are not well, I believe that you have come to the right place. I believe you have found the right place to get well. Today, I'm going to do just as I have been doing for the past couple of Sundays. I have a, and my key verses are not within the same passage of scripture for the full context of my sermon today. Uh, if you want to do some responsive reading, the text that you'll want to read from today is taken from the 15th chapter of John's gospel. And you'll want to start at the first verse and you'll want to go down through the 17th verse. That is, again, the 15th chapter of John's gospel. That's not the epistles. That's not first, second or third John. That is uh, the 15th chapter of John's gospel, uh, the fourth book in the New Testament. And again, when you get there, uh, you want to just put your finger there. You want to bookmark. Uh, that first verse down through the 17th verse, just bookmark that per page or remember that page. Then I want you to turn over to Matthew's gospel. This is where my key verse for today's sermon. This is where my key verses will be coming from. That is, again, the seventh chapter of Matthew's gospel. When you get to Matthew's gospel and you get to the seventh chapter, go down to the 17th and the 18th verse, the 17th and the 18th verse is going, those two verses will be my key verses for today's message. Again, that is Matthew's gospel. That is the seventh chapter. And when you get there, go down to the 17th and the 18th verse. Those two verses, I hope that all of you have that. Those two verses, they read, they say, even so, every good tree bears good fruit. But a bad tree bears bad fruit. The 18th verse says a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Now, I want you to understand that's Jesus speaking there. That is Jesus speaking there. And again, he says, even so, every good tree bears good fruit. But a bad tree bears bad fruit. Then he says in that 18th verse, it says a good tree cannot bear bad fruit nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. From those two verses, I want to focus on and I want to talk about today for a thought, the fruit you bear. Again, my thought for today is the fruit you, that is your fruit, the fruit you bear. Now, over the past couple of weeks, I have been preaching and talking about transformation. I've been talking about spiritual transformation and that spiritual transformation. That is the work of God. That's the work that God does inside of all of those who genuinely believe in him. He does that work through the inner dwelling of the Holy Spirit. Now, for the past couple of weeks, I have said that there is a reason I have said that there is a purpose to the work in which God is doing inside of all of those who genuinely believe in him. I said for my first pur purpose, the reason as to why God is, is transforming us is because he is changing us from a corrupt, a polluted being. What I mean by a corrupt and a polluted being, I mean that he is changing us from a sinful creature over into a new creature, over into a new being that is not corrupt, a new being that is not polluted with sin. He's changing us. He's transforming us into his image. So he's transforming us into his glory. He's transforming us into his righteousness. That was the first purpose. That was the first reason that I spoke of. But in my sermon last week, I said that there is another purpose. There is another reason as to why God is transforming us, why he is changing us. And I said in my sermon last week that God is transforming us for the purpose of bearing fruit. 
He's transforming all of those who truly and genuinely believe in him so that while we are in this world, we may bear fruit. So someone may ask the question, they may say, well, preacher, what does it mean to bear fruit? What are you talking about? What are you saying when you say bear fruit? Now, again, if you ask that question to believers, I believe you'll get a, a different you'll get a, a different variety of, of answers to that question. Some believers would tell you, well, fruit bearing is something that the preacher. Some believers will tell you that fruit bearing is something that the, the pastors, that is something that they do uh, when they preach, when they teach, when they minister. But as you have heard me say before, ministering is not simply just for the preacher. Ministering is something for all believers to do. So you will get another answer from other believers who will say, well, fruit bearing is doing the work of God. They will say that it is our actions. They will say that it is the deeds in which we do while we are in the world. Some believers, they 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 get so conscious of their actions. Some believers get so caught up in their deeds that their actions, their deeds no longer uh, are done out of genuine faith, out of what they truly believe in their heart. They start to do things out of their own religion. They do it because their religion, they believe, says they ought to do it. And as I have said before, there is a difference between genuine faith and religion. There is a difference there between one who acts out of true faith in the Lord and one who acts out of religion. So some believers, they take bearing fruit and they look at it as some sort of game. They look at it as some sort of competition where they are in competition with those who are within their church. They are in competition with those who are within their community, those who are within their society, and those who are all around the world. They are in competition. The competition is about winning the souls. And you will find nowhere in scripture where God says that we are in competition to win souls. But there are many believers who believe that they are in competition when it comes to bearing fruit, that they are in competition to win souls. Is that what bearing fruit is all about? Are we to bear fruit as some sort of competition to win souls? I want to take a look at this today and let us look at what Jesus, I want to look at the interpretation that Jesus has when it comes to sowing seed, when it comes to bearing fruit. And to do this, I want to first start off in Luke's gospel. There is a parable in Luke's gospel that you'll find in the eighth chapter, verses four through eight, where Jesus teaches this parable, this parable of a sower, and let's start there because Jesus has some important information here in this parable. He was, he was teaching this parable to the apostles. He was teaching this parable to the apostles and to other followers so that they could understand what it means to sow seed so that they can understand what it means to, to bear fruit. And so in this parable, if you have gotten there to the eighth chapter of Luke's gospel, you see that that Jesus speaks this parable of a sower who goes about sowing seed in his field. And Jesus says that as this, this sower was sowing his seed, that some of the seed fell by the wayside. Some of the seed that fell on a rock, some of the seed fell in thistle. It fell in, in terrible land. So some of the seed fell in terrible land while some of the seed actually fell on good ground. It fell on good ground. The seed that fell on good ground, of course, that seed, it, it grew, it flourished. It, it, it produced a good crop that, that produced a, a, a good fruit, right? 
while the other seed that fell on by the wayside, that fell on the rock and that fell in the thistle, that seed did not produce a, a good crop, right? Uh, if, if any crop sprang up, it soon withered away. The fruit was not produced by that crop, right? And so Jesus says in that parable that the sower is representative of God. And that we are the ground. We are the ground which produces the tree, which produces the crop, which produces the fruit, right? And so when we think of farmers, the livelihood of the farmer is to produce that, that crop, right? That's their livelihood. They want to produce a good crop. And I imagine that farmers everywhere, they dream of producing a crop that bears good fruit, whether it's fruit or vegetables, that, 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 that bears a good produce, if you will. And the whole goal of the farmer is to produce a crop that bears good sustenance to all of those who seek to eat of that crop, right? When, when, a, when a farmer gives away his crop, their crop, their hope, their dream is that that crop has provided a good sustenance. So we get an inside look at God there. We get an inside look here at bearing fruit, what it is all about here. Bearing fruit is about the sustenance, right? It is all about the sustenance that the crop, that the, the fruit actually provides to all of those who are around, all of those who will eat of that crop, who will eat of that fruit. The goal is to bear a good sustenance to all of those who will eat of that fruit. So when we look here at my key verse for today, when we go back over to Matthew's gospel and we look at that seventh chapter of Matthew's gospel and we look at that 17th verse, we'll see that there is something that I would tell you is very apparent in our key verses. I don't know if you see what is said there in the key verses, but it is very apparent and I will point it out to you just in case you don't see it there. We'll see it says again, this is Jesus speaking here. This is God in the flesh speaking here. This is God's interpretation of, of sowing seed. This is his interpretation of bearing fruit. He says, even so, every good tree bears good fruit. But you will notice here that the Lord mentions that there are bad trees. He says, but a bad tree bears not good fruit. A bad tree bears bad, bad fruit. He says, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. So apparently, from our key verse, from what Jesus says there, there's all kind of trees that are present in our world. There are good trees. There are bad trees. That's what Jesus says there in our key verse, in what he's speaking there. He's letting the apostles know that there are going to be, there's going to be good fruit in the world. There's going to be bad fruit in the world. And respectively, bad fruit cannot come from a good tree and, and good fruit cannot come from a bad tree. Everybody, I tell you today, who is present in our world, whether they realize it or, or, or not, they are bearing the fruit. Everybody is bearing fruit. There is sustenance that is coming from every last person that you interact with. There is sustenance that is coming from you. And you will notice here, if you look at those verses in the seventh chapter of Matthew's gospel, you will see that Jesus says within that passage of scripture there of the 15th verse, he says, beware. He says, beware of false prophets, false teachers. 
He says, you will know them by their fruit. You will know them by their fruit. There is going to be trees in this world, people in this world who bear bad fruit. And he says that the false prophets, false teachers, those who proclaim to no word says that they are going to bear bad fruit. And I ask you the question today, speaking about the fruit you bear, what kind of fruit are you bearing in our world today? What kind of sustenance are you providing to all of those who are around you? You see, we often, and I mentioned this a couple of Sundays ago, we often get to talking about the world in which we live in. And we say, rightfully so, that this whole world is not a good place. We say that this world is a bad place. And I recall saying in a sermon a couple of Sundays ago, I recall saying, well, what are you providing? What are you putting in the world? That was the question that I asked. We as believers, we get into a very bad habit of saying that. We, we talk about how messed up our world is today. We talk about what somebody else is doing in our world today, but we never focus on ourselves. We never look at us. I look at you today and I ask you today, well, what kind of fruit are, are you providing? What kind of fruit is falling from your tree today? What kind of fruit are you bearing today? What kind of sustenance what kind of sustenance are, are you putting into our world today? Again, I say, say to you today that everybody is bearing fruit. Everybody is bearing fruit in our world today. Some of the fruit that is being provided in our world today, some of the sustenance that is being provided in our way, world today, uh, it is sour. When I say that it is sour, I want you to understand that it is bitter. Some of the fruit, some of the sustenance that is being provided in our world today, it is sour, it is bitter. And what I mean by that is that the sustenance that is being provided, in other words, it is toxic. It is toxic. Not only is it is toxic, it is destructive. It is toxic and destructive to all of those who consume that fruit. And I want you to understand that in that passage of scripture from the seventh chapter of Matthew's gospel, for which my key verses come from, that Jesus was speaking spiritually, right? So when I say that there is toxic, when I say that there is destructive, when I say that there is sour, when I say that there is bitter fruit, being provided, being bared in our world today, when I say that there is toxic and destructive sustenance being provided in, in our world today, that I, I'm talking spiritually here. And when I say that there are people who is who are eating of that toxic, when they're eating of that destructive, when they're eating of that sour and bitter fruit, I want you to understand that they're not doing it physically. I want you to understand that they are doing it spiritually. So this toxic, this destructive fruit that people are eating spiritually, it is being toxic and destructive to the spirit, to the inner man, to our being. That is what God breathed into man's nostrils. When man became a living soul, there are many people who are in our world today who are consuming bitter, sour, destructive and toxic fruit. Other fruit that is being provided in our world today, I tell you that it is growing on trees that uh, is not providing the right nutrients for that fruit. And so when I say that it is not providing the right nutrients for fruit to be bared on that tree, I want you to understand that the fruit, when it grows on that tree, that that fruit is diminutive. When I say that that fruit is diminutive, I want you to understand 
that that fruit it grows and it's not ripe. That fruit, when I say that it is not ripe, I want you to understand uh, that fruit it has not had an opportunity to fully mature. Uh, that fruit is being shortchanged of nutrients to grow, to mature. And so when people eat of that fruit that falls from that tree, they are eating of a fruit uh, that leaves people empty on the inside. It leaves them empty in their inner man. It does not fulfill them in other words. It leaves them craving. It leaves them thirsting. It leaves them hungry for more. And so as many people who are in our world that are bearing the sour, bitter fruit, there are many other people who are in our world as well who are providing fruit that is diminutive, fruit that is that is not ripe. So sadly, it seems that some folks who are in our world providing this kind of fruit, it seems that they don't necessarily care about the fruit in which they bear. Do you care about the fruit in which you bear today? I would say that believers everywhere all of you who truly and genuinely believe in the Lord, all of you should care. Believers everywhere should certainly be conscious of the fruit in which they bear. Not because we are in some sort of competition to, to win souls. We, 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 we should not be conscious of the fruit in which we bear because of how we would look on the outside See, so many of us, we get caught up in our outward appearance. We want to appear to be believers. And so some folks, again, get caught up in, in being religious. They get caught up in their own religion where our faith, it must be true. Our faith, it must be genuine. We should be conscious of the fruit in which we bear because bearing fruit is representative, not only of ourselves, but most importantly, bearing fruit is representative of our relationship. It is representative of our fellowship. It is representative of our connection with God. Fruit bearing is about our connection with God. It's not necessarily about anything that you do consciously. It is about your connection. It speaks to your connection with the one who created you. It speaks to your connection with the one who I have said for the past couple of weeks, the one who is spiritually transforming you. It speaks to that connection. That is why we should be conscious of the fruit in which we bear, because it is representative of our connection with the Lord. It is representative of our connection with God. You see, when we are truly in fellowship with the Lord, when we have a relationship with the Lord, when we are connected to him, when we are connected with God, we are spiritually transformed by him. And when we are spiritually transformed by him, then bearing good fruit in this world today, it should be like breathing. It should be like that. It should be like breathing in and out. It should be automatic. Bearing fruit in the world when we are connected with him. When, when, when our relationship, when our fellowship with him is true. Bearing fruit in the world, bearing much fruit, bearing good fruit. Good fruit. Not sour fruit, not bitter fruit, not toxic fruit, not destructive fruit. Not fruit that is 
diminutive, not fruit that is not ripe, but fruit that is full, fruit that is whole, fruit that is mature, fruit that is ripe. Bearing that kind of fruit for the believer should be automatic. It should be something that we do on autopilot, if you will. Because of our connection with God, let's take a look at this connection because I want you to understand the, the importance of this connection. And we'll see it here over in the 15th chapter of John's gospel, what we have read here responsively today. If you want to pause this sermon so that you can read from that first verse down through the 17th verse, go ahead. You can do it now and then you can unpause it. But we're going to take a look at some of the scripture here to look at our connection with the Lord here. When it comes to bearing fruit, you'll see it say there in the very first verse in the 15th chapter of John's gospel, you'll see Jesus say that I am the true vine. That's the very first thing you'll see Jesus say there in that 15th verse. He says that he is the true vine and you'll see he says there that the father is the vine dresser. So we see again here where God, we see him as a farmer. We see God here as a gardener. Jesus says that the father is the vine dresser. When we take a look here at the second verse, Jesus says every branch in me says that he is a vine. And then he says that there are branches that are growing off that vine, right? So the branches are connected. In other words, the branches are connected to the true vine, which is Jesus Christ. So when Jesus speaks of the branches there, who is he talking about? Guess who he's talking about? He's talking about me. He's talking about you. He's talking about every true and genuine believer. He's talking about the connection there. So he says that within those first two verses there, Jesus says that he is the true vine. And he says that we are the branches that are connected, the branches that are connected to him, the true vine. We'll see him as we go on there in that scripture. If you look there in that fourth verse, Jesus says there in that fourth verse, he says, abide in me. Abide meaning to stay or to dwell says stay, dwell in me, continue to be connected to him, the true vine. And he says, I in you as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless, unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So Jesus says there, he says, in order for us, in order for you to bear good fruit, he says, you must, you must abide in him. You must be connected. You must be connected. You must be attached. You must be attached to that true vine. You must be attached to him. That's what Jesus says there. There are many people who are in our world today who believe that they don't have to be connected to the Lord. They believe that they don't have to be connected to him in order to bear good fruit. They go throughout this world saying you don't have to listen to what old Jesus said. You don't have to be connected to him. You can listen to what I say. This is what I said in my sermon last week, right? There are many preachers who are in our world today. They have never opened up the Bible. They have never studied scripture. They are not in fellowship. They do not have a relationship with God. What I mean by that is that they are not connected to the Lord, but they are preaching. They are preaching a doctrine. They are preaching a gospel. One in which they have made. One in which they have come up with. And they will tell you that their gospel, it is the best way for you to go. They are bearing fruit. Fruit that is sour, fruit that is bitter, toxic and destructive. Fruit that is not ripe. We cannot bear good fruit 
if we are not connected to the Lord. We cannot bear good fruit if we are not connected to Jesus. It is not possible for any good fruit to grow from a branch that is not connected to Jesus. Can fruit grow from that branch? Can fruit grow from that branch? Well, it will grow from a tree. It will grow from a seed that fell by the wayside. It will grow from a seed that fell on a rock. It will grow from a seed that fell in the thistle. Trees that, 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 that try to spring up from the wayside. They don't grow all that tall. They don't have much strength if they grow from a rock. Imagine a tree growing in thistle. Thistle chokes out. Thistle will choke out a tree. So the fruit that falls from that tree, if any, won't be good fruit. That's what's being consumed in our world today. It is not possible for any good fruit to grow on such a branch. A branch that is disconnected from Jesus Christ. It cannot bear any good fruit. That is what Jesus tells us within this passage of scripture here. When we look down at the sixth verse, we'll see Jesus says here in this sixth verse, he says, if anyone does not abide in me, if anyone is not connected to me, what Jesus is saying there in that sixth verse it says, if anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and is withered and they gather them and throw them to the fire and they are burned. He's talking about those who are actually saved. Those who are actually saved it says they can't lose their salvation. Their works will be revealed in the fire. That's what Jesus is saying there says a branch disconnected from the vine cannot bear any fruit. Imagine a branch that has fallen from the tree. How is that branch going to grow if it's no longer attached to the tree? How is it going to grow? How is it going to bear any kind of fruit at all? How is it going to be possible such a branch, if it was to fall from that tree, if it was to fall from that true vine, Jesus tells us that it withers. It withers. It dies. Just, just think about all of the trees that you have ever seen. A fallen branch, you know what kind of wood that is? For me, that's firewood. Especially if it's sweet gum, especially if it's oak, if it's dogwood, that, that, if it's pecan, that's, that's firewood for me. A branch that is disconnected from the true vine, it withers, it dies. This speaks to a spiritual disconnection. And again, in this passage of scripture, I want you to understand when Jesus says, I am the true vine, when Jesus says every branch in me, he's talking about saved. He's talking about all of those who are saved. Those who are in him are saved. But many of us, we get disconnected spiritually, don't we? This, this is speaking to spiritual disconnection here. This happens when we aren't diligent in our prayer life, right? We, we can become spiritually disconnected from the Lord when, when we aren't uh, faithful in our prayers, when we aren't diligent in our prayer life, when we aren't diligent in our studies, when we are not diligent in growing in our wisdom, when we are not diligent in our faith in the Lord, we can become disconnected spiritually. We can find ourselves being disconnected from the true vine. And you see spiritual disconnection. I tell you today that it stunts, it stunts our growth. It stunts our growth. 
And that, that branch, it can rot. That branch, it can wither. That branch, it can fall off of the true vine. If that branch is rotten while it's still connected to that true vine, the fruit that is on that branch, it becomes like the fruit that is on the trees, those bad trees that are out in the world. It becomes diminutive. It's not ripe. It's not mature. It's not full. It does not become full. It does not produce a good fruit. Jesus said to all of us, he says to all of us who truly and genuinely believe in him, he says there in the 16th verse, he says, you did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. Again, that is our purpose. That is our purpose as, as believers. That is our purpose as, as those who proclaim to be believers. We are a child of God so that we can bear fruit. The Lord, he does not want us bearing diminutive fruit. The Lord does not want us bearing fruit that is not ripe. The Lord wants us to bear much fruit. The Lord wants us to bear good fruit. We'll see him go on and say that in that 16th verse, in the 15th chapter of John's gospel, if you're still with me, if you're still looking at that, that chapter, he says, I chose you and pointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. But again, he says that your fruit, that your fruit should remain, not that it should be temporary fruit, fruit that, that leaves people uh, wanting more, that leaves them thirsting, that leaves them hungry, but fruit that should remain, fruit that in other words, it should be perpetual. Fruit that should be continual. Fruit that, in other words, should be long-lasting fruit. The fruit in which you and I should bear. The fruit that you bear. The fruit that you are putting out in the world today. It should be fruit that is perpetual. Fruit that is long lasting. Paul in his letter to the Galatians, he said in the fifth chapter, he said the fruit in which we bear in that 22nd and the 23rd verse, if you want to see it, it's the fruit in which we should bear should be fruit that is of love. Fruit that is of peace, fruit that is of long suffering, fruit that is of kindness, that is of goodness, that is of faithfulness, that is of gentleness, that is of self-control. That is the kind of fruit. That is the kind of sustenance that we should put out into the world today. Do you hear me here today? The sustenance that every true and genuine believer should provide to all of those who are around them should be a sustenance of love, a sustenance that is of joy, a sustenance that is of peace, a sustenance that is of kindness, that is of goodness, that is of long suffering, a sustenance that is of goodness, of faithfulness. The fruit you bear the sustenance that you provide. Is that the kind of fruit that you are putting out into the world today? God has cultivated us so that we provide this kind of fruit. God has cultivated us. He has spiritually transformed us so that we provide this kind of sustenance to all of those who are around us. That is the kind of fruit in which we should bear today. Yes, again, we talk about the world. We say that the world is not a good place. We say that the world is 
lacking of good fruit. And we begin to wonder, well, why? Why is the world this way? Why is there so much toxic fruit in our world today? Why is there so much destructive fruit that is in our world today? Again, Jesus warned us over in the seventh chapter of Matthew's gospel in that 15th verse. Jesus warned us that there would be false prophets in second Peter, the second chapter in the first verse. You'll find that Peter's he warns us of false teachers and he says that they will be among us, that they will be in the world. We were warned of this. Paul, he even spoke of this. He spoke of a time where there will be a departing from faith in God. He spoke of a, a time of apostasy over in his first letter to Timothy in the fourth chapter. He said, in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. You see, I tell you today that the reason why our world is the way that it is is because over the generations, since the creation of mankind, something that we touched on in our Sunday school lesson here this week, we have moved further and further away from the Lord. And because we are moving further and further away from God, we are moving further and further away from the fruits of his Holy Spirit. We are moving away from the fruit of love. We are moving further away from the, the, the fruit of, of joy. We are moving further away from the fruit of peace. We are moving further and further away from God himself. And so because we are moving further and further away from God himself, more and more bad trees are growing up in our world. And more of their seed are spreading and falling on the ground throughout our world today. And so more and more corrupt fruit, more and more bad fruit, more and more sour, bitter fruit, toxic, destructive fruit, more and more diminutive fruit, more and more fruit that is not ripe is falling from those trees in our world today. And more and more people are growing used to eating that bitter, toxic and destructive fruit that is falling in our world today. And they began to take on what they eat. I remember being a child. There was a book whose moral of the story is that you are what you eat. We are what we now eat spiritually today. You are what you consume spiritually. And many of us are consuming toxic, bitter, destructive fruit. Many of us are consuming that spiritually today. And that's beginning to spread throughout our society. Not only is it spreading throughout our society, it's spreading all around the world today. The bitter seed of hatred and anger, it is sprouting up more and more in our world today. And more and more people are consuming and eating of that bitter seed. That being said, I want to close out. I want to end here by saying today, that we who truly and genuinely believe in the Lord, we should continue to go about bearing good fruit in our world today. We should continue in the way of bearing good fruit because this is what God has co cultivated us for. This is what God has spiritually transformed you for, to continue to go about bearing good fruit. As Jesus said there, in the 15th chapter of John's gospel and the second verse, he said, every branch that bears fruit, he, God, the father prunes, said he, God, the father prunes that it may bear much more fruit. You see, I tell you today that God has cultivated us for this day. God has cultivated us for this time. God has cultivated us for this age. God has spiritually transformed all of us for this present age. We are made for this day. 
the fruit that you have, the fruit that you are bearing, it is made to be consumed in this day. Believers can still be made in this day. Good fruit can still be ate in this day. So continue. Continue. This is what you were cultivated for. This is why you bear that good fruit. Continue, I say. I believe that God has and I believe that God still is cultivating us. I believe that he's still spiritually transforming us because we are made to meet those bad trees that are producing bad fruit. We're made to battle them, to provide the good fruit in which we have to bear today. So that is my sermon for today. That is my message for today. I certainly hope that you enjoy it. I hope that you will share this message with someone somewhere, letting them know to continue to go on about bearing the good fruit in which they bear, making them conscious of the fruit in which they bear, not because of their outward appearance, but because of their connection. It speaks to their connection to the Lord. I certainly hope that you enjoy it and that you will share this message with someone somewhere. And I pray that you'll come back again next week. I'm certainly hoping to preach a sermon next week. It'll be the sermon before Palm Sunday. I might, I might be taking a Sunday off uh, to get ready for Palm Sunday. So be on the lookout. I might take a, a Sunday off where I may not preach a sermon, but I may do a Sunday school lesson. So you can certainly go over to the website, Newfound Faith for uh, the Sunday school lessons. Again, that's newfoundfaith.org. I left out the org part there, but newfoundfaith.org where all of my Bible studies, Sunday school lessons, sermons, they're all there. So uh, be sure to subscribe. You can subscribe to YouTube. You can also subscribe to the site, the website as well. So I certainly hope that you will come again for the next sermon that I do preach and that I do share. Until that time, I pray uh, that you continue to keep others lifted up in prayer. Uh, you don't know what somebody is going through. So keep someone lifted up in prayer. Keep me uh, lifted up in prayer. Keep all those who are around you lifted up in prayer. Let us also continue about in grace. That is our calling as a child of God. We are called to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. So let us continue about in grace. You don't know what somebody is going through. So let us continue to treat others with love. Let us continue to treat others with grace. Until next time, I pray that God continues to keep and to bless all of you.